This review is brought to you in part by Riders Hobby Shops, where the fun begins. Stop in to one of Riders' two convenient Michigan locations, where you'll find a full range of the latest hobby products, supplies, parts, tools, and paint. You'll find aisles and aisles of scale model kits, RC models, model rockets, Warhammer gaming, and railroading products. Stop in at Riders today and tell them Doug sent you. This review covers the Barris T-Buggy. It's a 125 scale kit from AMT, number 31563. Now the T-Buggy by Custom King George Barris was available as either a Roadster, a Sea cab delivery van, or a convertible. There was probably around five of each style made, so they're pretty rare. Initially released by MPC in 1971, the kit's been re-released recently as number 971. So now that you can get the kit, and it's, it's easy uh, to follow along here as we set the scene. Now the kit has 112 parts, and the 2002 release featured here was molded in light gray, clear, chrome plated parts with soft vinyl tires. The 22 version, just released, is molded in yellow. Unfortunately, it has all the shortcomings of the earlier kits, but with nice new decals. Now there were no part numbers on the sprues, and both the instructions in this kit and the parts have some poorly indicated locations. Now here's the scene. It's a hot summer day, and you're hosting a rockin' pool party, and suddenly one of your buddies stumbles over and says, Hey dude, you're almost out of beer. What a dilemma. You either leave the party and miss all the fun, or who are you going to call? The Barris Beer Buggy, of course. Now the kit's rated for the intermediate builder, but the location issues, small suspension parts, and large decals make it more suited to the advanced builder. But fortunately, we'll help you work through all those issues, and with some homemade decals, we'll turn the tea buggy into a beer buggy just for fun. And when you're done, the dimensions are about five and three quarters long, three inches wide, and two and three quarter inches high. And uh, oh, I hear Newt uh, in the background there. He's uh, behind the divider. That's our program director, and he has something to say. This model is totally cool, and it's like a new twist on DoorDash. I couldn't have said it better myself, Newt. Here are the contents of the kit. As you can see, it looks pretty good from a distance, but when you get closer up, you'll find there's some issues that need to be dealt with. But that was common for these older kits. Now, when you see or, or, or hear of any of the products used in the review, please remember to use the safety and use guidelines by the manufacturer. Here are the kit supplied decals, uh, and as you can see, some of them are pretty fine uh, and would require some patience and probably some sectioning, but we're not going to use these uh, due to the fact that we're changing the tea buggy into some new kind of animal. Here are the major body parts uh, that we'll be using, and as you noticed, I'm using the C-cab version, and so we're going to find that uh, there's only a slight parting uh, line on the body because it goes right along the fender edge, uh, so that's real simple to clean up with some s s sandpaper, but you'll also notice there is some ejector pin marks uh, in some of the locations that are visible, so you'll want to fill those with some putty and clean those up uh, as well. Now, I'm going to deviate quite a bit from the instructions, and we're going to assemble the C-cab bonnet uh, to the back of the cab there. That ledge that's marked with the um, oblique lines is where you mount the, the bottom of the uh, forward roof. And as you can see here, it just rests on top. I glued it into position. And, of course, there's some more ejector pins to, uh, to deal with if you're building a contest model. So with all the issues uh, identified, we're going to uh, start filling those in with putty, smooth them out nicely to our satisfaction, and then give it a nice uh, light couple coats of uh, light gray primer. Next, we're going to glue the doors and the door frame onto the back of the C-cab there. And as you can see, you simply glue the uh, frame into position, but don't get glue on the hinges so they'll operate. Because the frame was separate, that's going to leave us with a seam where the mating edges meet. So we're going to fill that in too and smooth that out as well. Now to turn this into a refrigerated cab to keep our beer cold, we're going to need a reefer. So you see here's some strip stock uh, and sheet stock that we're going to use to assemble the reefer for the top of the cab. And we're also going to have to block off the forward section of the cab in order to make sure 
that um, you know it has an enclosed area. So we're going to cut this piece of sheet stock and glue it into the front uh, portion of the cab. See the red arrows here indicate that I've uh, glued a couple of pieces of strip stock there to act as uh, uh, a buttress um, and a block to keep the um, uh, the portion of the forward you know cab seal uh, in position just behind the C in the C cab. Now you see it placed in position here and glued into place against those little um, tabs so that we can curve that out towards the seating area and have a nice clean look uh, to the back of our, our front of our cab. Here you see the assembled uh, refrigeration unit and so now with the reefer on top and the enclosure uh, we can keep our, our beer nice and cold. Now we can assemble the parts for the motor and as it goes um, it's a pretty nicely detailed motor uh, for a Corvair uh, flat six. It also has some headers and um, strangely enough um, a three injector or a three velocity stacks on top of a plenum for one carburetor. Uh, back when these molds were designed they had quite a bit of uh, draft angle to make sure the parts were, would eject from the molds uh, and those sometimes will give you a problem uh, like right here you want to flatten that out so that the oil pan and the uh, manifold on top fit flat and flush. Also note there's all kinds of ejector pin marks that are clearly visible on the headers. Um, I didn't bother much with them but if you're making a contest model there's a lot of filling and sanding to do. This also suffers from flash. I painted the engine block red and the, um, the transaxle was um, a steel color. There's a lot of chrome pieces on it and of course it's, there's some flash so you either live with it or you clean it up and re-chrome them. Um, it went together pretty well uh, except for some of the mating surfaces didn't fit real flush so you have to clean those up and uh, work on those. Now the carburetors and the uh, uh, velocity stacks just kind of baffled me so uh, I put um, I changed it to a side draft or a side port carb um, because I couldn't see any easy and stable way to mount that uh, all together. Here are the parts for the suspensions and frame and um, because we need uh, all the strength in the gluing joints uh, that we can get we're going to uh, scrape the chrome off all the little places where they go together and then uh, paint the frame afterwards to make sure it's good and solid. The red arrows here indicate where the engine is mounted. You're actually going to straddle uh, this this portion of the frame with the ridges alongside the oil pan. We start by you know gluing the uh, the large uh, jaw bone piece there into place that's uh, the rear suspension um, upper arms and then also there's uh, the cross member uh, in front just behind those um, little um, protrusions out the front you see right here that uh, needs to be flush and flat as you can get it uh, and push it into the frame and glue it in uh, to position with some strong glue. Now I scraped the mounting bolts off of the oil pan on, on each side um, and then I scraped off the chrome there so I could glue that to the frame. It also butts up against the uh, upper control arms there in the rear and so you can scratch that off and put a little uh, contact cement there. And This is what it looks like uh, from underneath your model. Uh, the frame shown here with the upper control arms and the engine and tranny in place. With the frame upside down go ahead and get the uh, coil springs out and smooth those off and uh, you can use a little slow setting glue to glue those into position in the holes in the uh, upper control arm there. Also notice the X uh, and the arrow is pointing to the uh, pivot arm there and that gets glued into position there. Uh, the large end of the axles is glued into the hole and the transaxles uh, right in the back there. So those go into position and, and trap the spring into place. Here's where it gets sticky. That is if you can get some cement on them. The tiny minuscule little mounting points uh, for these over engineered uh, suspensions are what's used to support the entire frame and axle front suspension. As you can see they're glued into the bottom here uh, of the uh, you know drop axle and um, just scrape off the chrome carefully to, so you've got something to glue to use some strong cement and then go ahead and add the tie rod there uh, to the um, uh, you know as you see it in those positions. You'll use this forward um, uh, hole and receiver 
uh, embossed because the back one is used for the steering arm. Now you've got the axle in position already on the frame, but I'm showing you here these radius rods that connect to those two uh, curved prongs and horns that are on top of the axle. And they'll go from there back to the um, uh, frame. And now we're actually start to work on the wheel assemblies and these uh, pieces are actually the bulleted wheel caps. And you'll find out there's a problem with uh, that uh, we'll have to fix too uh, on the rear end. You'll need to use a hobby knife or um, uh, you know some kind of a drill maybe to uh, scrape out the chrome there so you can glue those to the stub shafts later. And we'll set that uh, aside for now. Here are the wheel assemblies and of course you'll have to scrape the um, uh, chrome off of the back of the wheels there so that you can glue the inner wheels to them. I painted those uh, black and uh, put the wheels together now. Um, the wheels themselves are pretty nice. They've got a nice tread and they're, they're nice wide slicks. Uh, I went ahead and scuffed uh, you know the tread so it looks like they're a little more realistic and, and that takes off uh, any of the parting um, injection mold points too. Here are the assembled uh, wheels and uh, just use a little super glue and, uh, and a little, a couple spots to put those together. Well now with the basic frame and suspension together we can uh, do a little mock up with the wheels to see how it's going to set. And as you can see uh, all four wheels are touching so we're in pretty good shape. We um, wanted to start working on the dash and the, um, the leftmost arrow here points to a coupled pair of little dots. Uh, and the other two on the right point to a little larger dots of chrome pieces. Now these are supposed to be inserted from the back side of the dash to uh, provide for instruments. But I like the looks of the little chrome, uh, small ones because there's no detail anyway. But I used a couple of uh, decal type uh, gauges to insert from the uh, uh, for the other two larger gauges. Here you see um, we're going to start working on the body shell and uh, you see those black dots? Those were used to indicate where the injector pin marks were. But notice that even after two coats of primer, they just bled right through. So keep that in mind uh, if you're using light colors. So after three light coats of uh, Krylon's Bauhaus gold paint, um, this is the result and it's almost a dead ringer for the box art color. I wanted to leave some of the um, fenders underneath um, uh, that are raised as the um, body color and then paint the rest of the lower body uh, black. So I outlined that uh, fenders right up there with with a sharpie so that um, you know you could get very close uh, without having to worry about uh, getting paint on the body parts. And so here you can still see the raised ridge has uh, the yellow body paint and the rest of it was painted flat black except where the gas uh, tank is located. I painted the inside of the uh, C cab uh, flat black as well. Now here's where the fun begins with our homemade decals. I simply got some images of uh, some uh, beer cases and put them together in a stack uh, to put inside of the back of the C cab there. So as you're looking uh, through the back and towards the front you see a stack of uh, beer cases. Now that the cab is finished um, for the refrigeration unit, I'm going to glue the uh, cab onto the body shell. And um, you just, you're just going to ha simply have to scrape a little glue off where the joint is. And then you can also use the forward portion of the divider there uh, on the back of where the seating area was to cement that into position as well. Next I hand painted the um, inside of the seat cab, the back wall, and the interior flat black. Because there's so much chrome on the body around the car, uh, uh, truck I should say, I, I decided to put a little gold foil accent on the uh, panels on the back uh, just to keep it from looking so plain there. Now here's a collection of uh, different kinds of parts. We're going to paint the uh, seats flat black and install those. The gas tank is aluminum color and, and is glued to the uh, bottom and the front. Uh, the steering shaft and the steering box will be added underneath later. And the interior parts, you know, the, the pedals uh, and uh, the shifter and the brake uh, all have some flat black uh, accoutrements on basically chrome parts. Next we'll add the frame uh, to the body and you'll notice the scratch off areas there with the large arrow. That's where you're going to glue the um, frame to that uh, underside of the shell. And that small arrow inside the body little patch there that's scraped off, you can actually butt up the, the front end of that jawbone yoke, the upper control arms, and use some uh, you know good strong glue there to keep the, the frame rigid and in place. 
and we're going to add uh, the rest of the pieces here, uh, including the wheels, etc. You have some brake rotors uh, that you are supposed to install in the back, but I find that if you do that, there's not enough clearance to get the caps on the stub shafts of the axles. So the only way to use them would be to glue the whole thing together without allowing for rotation of the wheel. So I glued the rears into place without the um, caliper and brake, um, uh, you know, back there. But there aren't any in the front either. And then went ahead and put some glue on the caps and glued the wheels into position on the frame. We waited to put the steering box and shaft into place because it's a finite length and it fits to the body, but there's no locating marks on the body for where it goes. So you have to find out where that goes. And so we put that in later. Now the steering shaft itself has a little dent in it, which that little tiny shaft on the uh, steering box is supposed to just rest on. So what I did was drill it out. Uh, with a hole so that I can insert the end of the shaft into the hole for a positive placement. As you can see here, it's just slightly underneath the body uh, of the uh, shaft there so that it, 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 you know, it's a positive location. Now you can glue the, the uh, steering shaft there to the tie rods, uh, to that rear hole and tie rod fixture on the uh, passenger side. Use a little slow setting glue because we're going to locate it to the steering box. Now that we have the steering shaft uh, with its fixed length, we can locate the steering box against the front of the body there, uh, scratch off a little paint, and glue them into position with some slow setting glue. Now assemble this collection of parts. We've got the um, hood, uh, the grill, wipers, uh, the uh, dash and steering, uh, also the windshield frame, and the windshield glass. Before we can add the hood uh, to the body shell, there's some detailing that needs to be done. Back in the early days of auto history, they used a leather strap to hold the hood down uh, and the side wings um, with leather straps. So we're going to tape those off, and then I used a uh, brown uh, Sharpie to, to paint, so to speak, the straps. Next, I assembled the windshield uh, glass and the frame, and note that the upper window is uh, tilted, and back in the early days, that was air conditioning. You could actually tilt that uh, window at an angle to get some airflow through the cab. So I left it that way. Scrape the paint off of the top back of the ledge of the uh, dashboard there, and it gets glued to a little ridge uh, just below the windows on the window frame. So I painted the, uh, the grill section of the ra radiator shroud there black and uh, glued that onto the front. It also has some um, attachment points that y you might want to refinish if you're going to make a contest model. Uh, and also it's got some uh, nice uh, uh, buckles on the straps so I just painted those uh, with a little um, a Molotow pen number one and added the um, uh, gas cap so to speak to the center. Uh, by scratching off a little glue in the depression for that. While the hood dried, um, I completed the dashboard by adding the steering mast uh, to the notch underneath the uh, dash and the wheel, uh, which uh, I painted um, the rim a uh, uh, flat black as well. Now, next, you'll glue the back of the hood, so scrape the paint off there, to a little ridge on the front of the windshield uh, frame. It, it glues right into position under that ridge and it actually has a, a set angle which you'll find problematic when you try to mate this to the C-cab. The angle wasn't quite right to fit the windshield frame underneath the C-cab so I, I merely um, glued it to the front forward ridge uh, of the C-cab and the hood just glues into place and gullies uh, through the inside of the fender wells and the grill is just you know it's pushed back to the frame. I painted the headers flat white and after they had dried uh, I you know scraped the glue off of the exhaust uh, where it meets the uh, heads and I glued that into position making sure that they were both level and, and straight. Removing all the chrome and paint from locating points these um, two bumper uh, mounts um, mount to little um, bumps on the bottom of the body um, they go into the position there, and then underneath the uh, uh, radiator shroud, you can glue them into position on that. And then, of course, you glue the bumper uh, to the front of those rails. Use some clear glue or white glue and uh, glue the headlight lenses to the uh, inside of the uh, mounts uh, there, uh, the nacelles, and uh, make sure you align the, um, the, the uh, ridges, you know, the lines on the headlight so that they're 
up and down and vertical um, and also um, uh, put let those uh, dry and scrape the chrome off of the uh, mounting points. Now from this actual reproduction of one of the prototypes for the uh, uh, T-Buggy you can see that they use these lanterns for turn signals so I decided to uh, copy that effect but <laughs> there's some work to do on the turn signals themselves as you can see here uh, they have a certain amount of flash uh, that is vertically through the thing on a longitudinal plate in the there's sinks and there's ejector pins on them so um, I clean them up uh, at least as far as the forward faces go you can see the flash on the left here and then the clean surface on the right and I glued a couple of colored lens into position for those uh, units you can see here that the um, the turn signals the yellow ones uh, by the way those came from my parts box those um, usually come off of a semi truck uh, but you can see them mounted here in front uh, on the windshield frame there's two um, you know a little posts there there's also a lower post for the um, bugle horn uh, which uh, I painted black and put into position there and then uh, the tail lights uh, they are installed underneath the fenders at the very last uh, portion of the underbody I often find um, that when you get all this done and you've got paint and you've got glue and angles etc quite often the doors won't close completely so I just use a little piece of double sided tape to make them uh, tack and stay in position closed when I when I don't want them open so you can see here they, they fit pretty flush then I also bent a little piece of wire and added a handle to the back door with custom decals you can really get creative with your models and this whole review is meant to show how you can take an old classic model, give it a new twist, and make it something kind of fun. Um, most of these images were found on the internet or just printed out in, uh, in Microsoft's uh, PowerPoint. I then used my inkjet printer to print those out on some decal paper and then uh, simply gave it a couple of coats of crystal clear paint and um, cut them out to apply them onto your model. Now, because there's three versions, you'll have some parts left over, and of course, I didn't use the decals either, but your model is finished. There you have it. This great little classic kit, even though it takes a lot of extra work, with the uh, exposure here of all of the secrets, you should be able to finish it in fine form, and look at all the possibilities. I mean, uh, the other day, going down the road, I saw a sign that for a cannabis uh, outlet that said, free delivery. Hmm, the possibilities. Anyway, if I were you, I'd buy one and put it on my shelf.